Let's bring in solar astrophysicist from the Southwest Research Institute, Amir Caspi. Amir, just listening to Gotti's joy and his reporting from the sky, talking about how it was a life-changing experience, he said, and such a reminder of just how fast the sun and moon are moving. For other people we've spoken to today, I'm, I'm one of them. It was also just an insane reminder of how small we are and how vast the universe is. But you do this stuff for a living. What does a day like today mean to you? You know, uh, we do this stuff for a living, but at the same time, this is just as transformative an event uh, as it is for everybody else. Uh, even though I study the sun every day, uh, this is actually only my second total solar eclipse wow. that I've been able to observe. And uh, it, uh, it really is a magical experience and there's nothing that can really describe it in any words other than the same ones you just heard from Gotti. Hmm. Uh, you have led multiple experiments during a past, or at least during another solar eclipse. Uh, there was one that you did with NASA, right? So talk to us about what you and other scientists hope to take away from witnessing and studying events like this. Uh, yeah, uh, during the last total solar eclipse, we ran a mission with NASA's WB-57 aircraft. So they fly even higher at about 50,000 feet uh, with cameras outfitted on their nose cones. Uh, we did that same experiment along with two other experiments led by other research teams this year with the WB-57s. Uh, we uh, among uh, we had an experiment that uh, there were also a lot of other experiments doing citizen science uh, or participatory science where uh, students and uh, non-scientist amateurs participate in doing scientific research. Uh, our experiment was called Citizen Kate 2024, uh, but there were uh, probably over uh, half a dozen other big citizen science events. What we really hope to study is the solar corona, the sun's outermost atmosphere that you can only see during a total solar eclipse. And uh, solar eclipses really give us that unique opportunity to study that sun's tenuous outermost atmosphere to learn really important questions uh, about things like why the solar corona is so hot uh, it's millions of degrees, which is a lot hotter than the solar surface, which is only a few thousand degrees. Uh, and also how the corona puts out a constant stream of particles called the solar wind that then come out into interplanetary space and can affect us here on Earth. So what does tomorrow and the next couple of weeks look like for someone like you? I mean, the universe is so vast and I'm always amazed when I see these little snippets of, oh, scientists have discovered and figured this out about maybe this has changed on what we thought we knew about black holes, all these different things. But I'm also an English major, so sometimes it just goes totally over my head. So what does tomorrow and the coming weeks look like for someone like you in your studies and for people who were maybe also English majors like me, why should they care about these events beyond just, wow, it was mesmerizing to see? Those are very good questions. So, you know, for the next few weeks, in fact, probably for the next few months, maybe even years, we, uh, meaning me, my team, and other scientists, uh, are going to be taking all of the data that we gathered through our various experiments today and analyzing that data to see what we can uncover about the sun's solar corona or the Earth's atmosphere and how it responds to uh, the solar eclipse. Or there were also experiments that were studying how animals respond to the solar eclipse. Everybody will be taking home that data and spending the next few weeks or months trying to figure out exactly what information they learned and what kind of questions they've answered. Hmm. And that's important uh, for a couple of reasons. One is really just the fundamental knowledge of it all. Now, you know, the sun is a star, as you mentioned. We live around a star. A lot of people forget that because it's just in the sky every day. But by studying our sun, our star, we can learn about these same kinds of physics and processes that happen everywhere else in the universe, around other stars, around other planetary systems, even around exotic objects like black holes and neutron stars. We can learn a lot about what happens there by studying our own sun. But our sun is also the source of what we call space weather. It's constantly putting out radiation, uh, both in the form of light and in the form of particles that comes out and comes into interplanetary space. And it affects us both in space with our satellites and our astronauts. And it also affects us here on Earth. 
the best way to understand space weather is to study where it starts, which is at the sun. Hmm. Amir Caspi, astrophysicist, you are brilliant and have such a cool job. We are glad you do it. And thank you for giving us some of your time tonight. We appreciate it. My pleasure. Thanks so much. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.